Greg Pickle, I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, this is t this is the first, in my head, the first, my big head, not a Brennan head. This is the first official ride-along video of the 2018 regular season. Sure. I know we're in August. Yes. I know it feels like it's 130 out, but, you know, interesting, uh, interesting big t uh, Penn State media day with James Franklin, his players, <clears throat> and his coordinators. And, you know, we've talked about that enough. Uh, let's talk about just at the start of camp. I think you and I would both agree if there were like four priorities for Penn State in some particular order. Uh -huh. It would be, <clears throat> excuse me, it would be the backup depth at, depth at uh, defensive tackle. Yep. It would be the linebacker group overall, even with Manny Bowen now in the picture. <clears throat> it would be place kicker, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. That is the thing with... Tyler Davis moving on and some uncertainty about whether James would move Blake Gillikin to that spot and be a punter place kicker. Um, I think tight end is obviously uh, a big need. Someone's going to have to step up or Tommy Stevens is about to pull like quadruple duty in the fall. Right. Um, so if you had to, I know James keeps talking about defensive tackle depth. I'm not sure I agree with that as the, as the number one defensive uh Priority, but of all those four, what jumps out at you as the one thing you need to see? They need to lock it down uh, before the App State game and feel good about it. Yeah, it's obviously the kicker. I don't really know if there's a way around it. I mean, I think we've seen with Sam Ficken and then with Tyler Davis that you can get by with guys that weren't high profile recruits, that weren't blown, blowing away and blowing up at kicking camps. But you need a guy that's consistent and reliable, and both of those guys were. You can make the argument, of course, that outside of a certain distance they weren't. But inside of 40, Tyler Davis didn't miss too many, Bob. And I think that for Penn State right now, the problem they have is that I don't think James Franklin wants Blake Gillikin to be the kicker, but I think Blake Gillikin is going to end up having to be the kicker. The question becomes, can they get somebody to do the kickoff duties? So that way Gilligan just punts and right. does field goals, and he's not doing all three as James Franklin has often talked about. So to me, that's the one thing they got to get locked down. You cannot go to Pittsburgh. I don't care how bad they are. I don't care if Penn State's won a three-touchdown favor or whatever it is. You cannot go into Pittsburgh a night game environment and not have a good feeling about your kicker. Yeah. By the way, if Penn State is laying 21, I'm going to get a second mortgage, I think, on my house. Yeah, I might, it's probably I might 10. bet Pitt, it's but there's 10. a chance. Uh, to me, I, I'm really – I think I think tight end – is a pretty big priority. I just don't. I just. I don't know how you, the coaching staff can feel good about some of the contenders that have experience, just because of health reasons. Uh, John Holland and Nick Bowers didn't see him in spring, and maybe that was preventative more than anything. And they're going to give him a long look and see how they hold up. Danny Dalton got some praise, but when we watched some practices, he was getting yelled at a lot by a certain quarterback. I thought. Um, it's great that they have Tommy Stevens, but I think I think tight end is a pretty big deal. They really they really needed Mike Jasicki in the red zone a lot last year, so I think that's going to be one that I think James Franklin's probably going to reference coming out of you know by the middle of the camp. If you don't hear him talk about somebody who's took a step forward, I think that's probably uh, going to be an issue. I think defensive tackle depth. I think I I, I think Sean Spencer has the talent, whether it's inexperienced or not, to find some guys to play 8 to 10 snaps in a game behind Windsor and Kevin Givens if they can, uh, as long as they stay healthy. I think in a pinch, even though I, I don't think they want to do it, they can always kick either Ryan Buckholtz or maybe even your tour gross Matos inside because he's big enough. Linebacker to me is fascinating only because, you know, you just don't know how soon Manny Bowen's going to be ready to play. Um, they play a tough schedule. There's going to be injuries at that position. There always are. And... <clears throat> I think he's going to have to be one of the three best linebackers at some point in the season. If he's not, either things are either something's gone wrong with Manny, or maybe they feel just really good about the development of some of the young guys. But he, to me, is one of the three. The one other one I wanted to bring up here on this Penn State ride along um, is I I just think that I look at DeAndre Tompkins moving inside after playing outside last year to play the slot, and it, you would think right now that's the plan. Um, who, if, who, you know, it's going to be Juwan and DeAndre Tompkins, so 
who would you? Who, what are some of the possibilities outside? Justin Shorter's one. We like him, but he's a freshman, and you know he's going to have to earn it. What else? What else could they do outside? Yeah, I mean, I, I just wonder if I, I'm trying to figure out if Tompkins is a long-term answer in the slot. If they move him there for the start of the year until they feel better about KJ Hamler in the slot, and then maybe move Tompkins back out once they feel. I, I mean, I talked to Hamler for a while, Bob. I like him. I think he's super talented. He's not the biggest guy in the world. You don't need to be to play the slot. I don't know what they envision with Mac Hippenhammer. Is he an inside guy? Is he an outside guy? Is certainly up for debate. He's probably tall enough to play outside, mm-hmm. but I don't know if he's big enough. Uh, I don't know if he's had enough time to develop to to be at uh, a point where, say, a Juwan Johnson is. So, to me, I think it's shorter more than likely, but there's certainly some other guys in play as well, and he has to prove himself, too. Five-star recruit, looks the part, acts the part, but he has to obviously be the part uh, by the time week one gets here. A lot of people thought that <clears throat> Mike Jasicki was a, actually a wideout in disguise last year as a tight end. Um, my question for you is, if a tight end doesn't emerge, they kind of want to limit Tommy and use him in the red zone. You know, there's still 80 yards of field to cover. Uh, could you foresee a scenario where they say, "Look, we like our wideouts. We have a lot. Of, we have a couple good slot guys. What if we just went four wide and spread the field?" Yeah, it's certainly up for uh, certainly something they could do. And you, I, I still am not convinced that you're not going to see Christian Coons in some kind of red zone role. You know, I just think that. When you talk about replacing Kasiki in the red zone, uh, Kuntz sort of fits that mold. He might not be ready to take on a full beating in the Big Ten, but that's where you get your four games that you can still redshirt uh, for freshmen that comes into play. Bob, you can put a package in for a guy like that. And look, they might not do it. James Franklin's been pretty clear about the fact that they're not going to play guys just for the sake of playing them. But you can put a package or two in for him in the red zone and, you know, pull him out at a big moment late in the game. And, uh, you know, he could make something happen for you. So I think that's an option. I think four receivers is an option. And who knows? Maybe we're selling these guys short and one of the tight ends will end up producing. But it's hard to buy into it until you actually see it. Yeah. And uh, the other thing about it is, you know, they open with Appalachian State. And that's – I don't know that I would call that an easy opener. I don't even – I mean, I, I think Appalachian State – um, that's a courageous outfit that's used to yeah. playing in, in pretty big venues. Yep. They don't, they do not go down easy on the football field. They played Georgia last year, like they played Wake Forest last year. So it's not like the opener. You, you know, there's a chance there might not be a lot of time to experiment. So I, I do think August is pretty critical um, in almost every phase uh, by quarterback. Um, and I just think of the areas that we discussed. Um, it, I think, you know, usually around the third week in uh, August, James kind of has the reveal where he talks about guys who have impressed him. Right. And I think of the positions we we, uh, we talked about, if, if he does not mention some uh, linebackers, some defensive tackles, and some tight ends, I think that Penn State's got some uh, – Penn State could, could have some issues maybe early in the year. They have to get it right sooner rather than later. I think the pit game – in week two, it's going to be tough if they have some questions. But that goes with losing all the players that right. they lost. That goes with losing, obviously, Barkley and Jasicki and Hamilton and losing eight guys on, on defense. One more thing. I do I do kind of feel like, just to get back to the de- defensive side, Brent's, Brent Pry kind of hinted that, you know, by about the midway point of the season, there's a real good chance this defense, because of their speed and depth, even though they lost all these players, could be better than last year's. Do you buy that? Um. I obviously understand why he's optimistic. I mean, I think that, to me, I was telling somebody the other day, Bob, to me, I think they have as much talent, if not more, yeah. like raw talent, as any Penn State defense has had in probably a, in quite some time. I mean, this group, if you look at the recruiting stars, if you look at what these yeah. kids have uh, produced in high school, what some of them have already produced on the field, I mean, Bob, it's probably the most talented group James Franklin has had, but it's so light on experience that... Mm-hmm. Do you trust it? That's really the question. Do you trust the defense? You know, we talked about defensive tackles to start this. Do you trust the defensive tackles, the young guys, to step up and get it done? That's that's sort of where uh, where things start. And in the secondary, too, I know they feel good about who they have back yeah. there. But outside of John Reed, you know, Tariq Castro Fields played a lot of football. Imani or your Warriors played a lot of football. But the question to me is, you know, are these guys ready for the Big Ten spotlight? So we'll have to wait and see. I am not going to dismiss it out of hand, but there is a ton of talent to replace it left on that side of the ball and a lot of guys who need to step up yeah so there's a few weeks for them to figure it out there's also a few weeks for you and i to figure stuff out yeah like this uh 322 detour yeah we we kind of ran into it i don't know if the ride-along people are noticing that we're not moving right now but uh (laughs) thanks to the good people of pendot or whoever it is 
Uh, there's a little bit of work going on on 322 where it's one lane and we're not loving it in this heat, but that's our problem. Anyway, that's it for round one of the ride along and we will hopefully have some new information for you guys a little bit later in the week.